Hello, good people. Thank you so much for checking out my channel. Um, this is a recap of 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days. This is season five, episode 10. All right, guys. So we started the episode out with Usman and Kimberly. And we know Kimberly, she was she's been begging Usman. The ponytail is I don't know. It's just I don't hear any type of way. But um, Kimberly, she's been begging Usman to sleep with her. So he finally decides, okay, it's now time to have sex. So they didn't get to the part of showing them doing anything, which I don't want to see that. I'm not trying to watch porn on 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days. And I'm not saying anything's wrong with porn if that's, <laughs> well, I don't know, I guess we're we're just gonna skip that part but i wasn't trying to see kimberly and Usman get down okay so she's just like a kid in the candy store she's so excited about getting the d from Usman, soldier boy he even had the nerve to put the chain on guys the soldier boy necklace <laughs> okay so before they got to the nighttime um that they really didn't dive into prior to that Usman. He agrees to speak to Kimberly's son. She has an adult son. His name is Jamal. So they call Jamal and she intro introduces Usman to Jamal over the phone. And so um, Jamal, he was pretty much saying that he didn't think their relationship made sense. But overall, he just want his mom to be happy. He's, you know, rooting for her happiness. And Usman's like he would never do anything to hurt her. Whatever. All right, so we have Ella and her man, um, the guy that's from China. I think it's Johnny. Um, I'm really not interested in them. However, Ella, she gives him an ultimatum about meeting her in Dubai, even though it will only be for two weeks. And he thinks that that's too short of a time because there's so much that goes into it. I think he would have to quarantine Um prior to getting there and also before he leaves it's just it's it's a lot of red tape for him and he thinks that they will need more time but um she's like it's time for them to meet or you know she's just going to have to go to other measures such as maybe they'll just have to go to an open relationship meaning that she would be dating other people and that's not something that his culture is used to he's not into um, open relationships and he's a monogamous person and he wants to be monogamous with Ella. So now she's left it up to him within a short period of time to decide what he's going to do. So um, I guess we have to wait another episode or so to see if they're really going to, well, I think Ella, she went ahead and booked her ticket. So it's where they're going to meet in Dubai. So we should be seeing that soon. Um, then we have Memphis and, um, Hamza and it starts out with Hamza. He's out shopping for suits for their wedding with his mom and his mom can tell that he's bothered by something like he has something on his mind. And so, you know, she asked him what's going on and he mentions that Memphis, um, had spoke to him about the prenup, about signing paperwork, stating that, he could um he couldn't get anything from her if they were to divorce and so the mom is thinking that since they don't seem to have trust amongst each other maybe they are rushing into the marriage and they need to wait they need to date a little longer so we fast forward to him and memphis getting together and uh, Memphis, she did have a part on the episode where she was talking to one of her friends, but she's annoying to me. So I just skipped to the part to where she was talking to Hamza. And it's like she's she goes up on the rooftop to talk to him about something that she's done. I think it's something with maybe she spent time with her ex-husband, ex boyfriend ex something. I skipped over her part when she was just talking to her friend. And all I know is she went up to the rooftop to confess to Hamza about something, but Hamza went ahead and cut her off. And he was like, they need to like stop the wedding and not get married right now. So that's how their part went off. And it shows next week when she was like, what, what? So it, it's like, she's not trying to hear him about stopping the wedding. She really wants to marry him. And 
the word on these YouTube streets. I think I got it from maybe Kim Pyre's show. I watched Kim Pyre. And it's been alleged that she had a baby. She's pregnant or something like that. And they're thinking it's Hamza's, Hamza's baby. So I don't know. I guess we'll find out sooner or later. So that was it with them. So we also have um, Mike and Humina. Mike's back at home in the U.S. That's how it starts out. And he's um, talking to his dad and his grandfather. He lives with those two. And he's like, ever since he came back to the U.S., he, he, there's been some distance um, in the relationship between him and Hamina. And that um, things don't seem to be the same. And it's been ever since she asked him for some money so she can get lipo and get breast augmentation because she wants to be a model. She's trying to get her body to be a model. This man is already supporting that heifer and her entire family over there in Colombia. And now she wants money for lipo and the breast augmentation to be a model. She's just a gold digger. Yes. And so Mike father and the grandfather their first their question is are you still sending her money and so he tells them that he's paying for half of her apartment and they're telling him no you need to stop that you do not need to be sending her money he needs to listen to them so but what he does is he pack his bag including his work laptop and he goes over to Columbia saying he's going to work from over there for a few weeks or whatever and it appears that he surprised Hamina with the visit because she doesn't seem to be too happy to see him. And she's just like, you came without even saying you was going to come. It was, you know, it was no confirmation that you was coming. I even told you to wait, but here you are. And he even expressed that too, that he wasn't feeling the joy that she, um, that she should have had when he came back. But and that girl was in party mode. Like, as soon as he got there, she was like, oh, I'm going out to the club tonight. He was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can go out to the club. Bruh, she don't care if you go to the club with her or not. She was going to party. And she act like she was already, like, she already had a buzz or was high or something like that. I don't know. But I really wish he would leave that chick alone. So they go out to the club. And he's already tired because, of course, he had to be up early to catch the flight over there. And traveling is exhausting. So he really didn't have time to rest. And plus, he brought his work laptop. I hope you don't get in trouble for that shit because I don't think every job will let you cross the U.S. borders to work from your laptop. So I hope he keeps that on the, on the wraps. So um, anyway, um, he already expressed to her before they went out that he was kind of tired, but he would go out with her. And I guess he thought that maybe by him going with her, she was going to come back home with him. That helpful let that man come back home alone. She sent him back home in a cab about midnight. And then she did not come back home until about nine o'clock the next morning. She needs to be on a job, a J-O-B. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> so, of course, he questioned her, and she's, like, rubbing her head, got a serious hang hangover. Like, I don't know. She really got her buzz on, party on, whatever. And he's questioning her about men and if she was with any men. And she was like, there were a lot of men at the club, but she was not with any. And then he goes on to say that he trusts her, and it's not a problem. And she was like, well, if you trusted me, you wouldn't even be asking these questions. And she got up and walked off from him. I don't know. I, I hate for people to be used. And I feel like she's really using him to help take care of her family. And she wants her body work. So, I don't know. This dude, man, it's somebody in the United States for you, baby. Come back home. You don't have to go over there for a gold digger. I mean, they're here, too. But you, I quite, I'm quite sure you can find someone genuine. I really believe that. So that was Mike and Jimena. So we go over to, um, oh, Ben and Mahogany. Magony. Ma I think she said her name was Magony. So we know Ben was at the restaurant waiting on 
um, Mahogany, Magony, Magony, that's how she said her name, to come to the restaurant because he went to Peru. She didn't meet him at the airport. And then so he located where she lived in Peru. So he went to her hometown and he went to a restaurant that was close to where she lives. He's been waiting there. What they're telling us has been for hours, which they probably lie. You know how they soup it up. So um, finally, she comes to the restaurant. So it appears not to be a catfish. But word on these YouTube streets once again, and I think I heard this on A2, AT2 channel, is that Mahogany, Mahogany, she's a Disney actress. And you know it was already alleged that Ben is also an actor. So it seems to be two, two act, an actor and an actress that TLC has hired to be on this 90 Day Fiance before the 90 Day show. That they hired these two. I don't know. So anyway, if they did, the storyline they have is that now she's met him at the restaurant and she explains that she was hesitant about meeting him because of her parents, because they was kind of concerned about his intentions. So I don't know if this is a lie or what, but it shows next week where he's supposed to meet the parents. Maybe an act. I pretty much fast forward past them anyway. It is what it is. And I also want to say she does not look anything like the pictures they were showing. So I don't know if they cast someone that looked like somebody that he probably got catfished by before. Because they did mention that he was catfished once, many times before. I think several times according to his family. So that's Ben and Mogany. All right. Let's see who we have left. Oh, Gino and Jasmine. So Jasmine is still flipping out on Gino ass. Oh my goodness. You know, she's been pissed at him because she found out from his ex that Gino had been still keeping in touch with the ex. But not only that, Gino, he took some topless pictures that Jasmine had sent him privately and he sent them to the ex. And his reason is that he wanted to make the ex jealous. It's just a bunch of crap. So she's still flipping out and crying, boohooing about it while they're on some private island that seems to be very beautiful. Like, oh man, you go to a private island and this is the way it turned out. Like, it's pretty bad. So she's like all gone ho about leaving there and he's so despicable. He's so disgusting. And just like they showed from the, <laughs> from the preview, she goes back into the room with him. And she jumps up on the bed because he's sitting on the bed all calm and collect. So she jumps up on the bed and she snatched that damn hat off his head. And you know, you got you guys that um, he's very insecure about his head. It's like something black. I don't know if it's hair, if it's dye, if it's somebody's name tattoo in the back of his head, if it's a drawing or something. It's something in the back of his, his head that it's really black it's very dark and he's a pale white man so it's something going on back there that he's been trying to hide so <laughs> he mentioned to her he tried to get smart at the mouth he was he's a smart ass so he got smart with her saying um she was saying she was going to sue him and he was she was going to sue him for sending her new pictures and he was like they were not new if they were just you were just topless you know so <laughs> he's trying to get smart that really pissed her off so she jumped up on the bed and she snatched that damn hat off his head but was what was really funnier than that is that gino he just grabbed his backpack and he pulled out another darn hat and threw it on his head. So he's like a man with many hats around here. He pulling hats out from everywhere. So he keep those hats on deck. So that was kind of funny. But towards the um the tail end, those two, they do make up. Um, she finally comes down. She goes back. She said that she left her purse in his room. You know, I don't know. So she said she left his per her purse in his room and she's ready to leave the island. So when she goes to get her purse and she's acting calm and collect and he finally asks if he could speak to her. And what he do is he apologized to her and they make up. So that was all with them. And so next week it's showing where they are going to um, meet her parents her mom. All right. So that was 90 day fiance before the 90 days. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.